In this video, I'm going to give you seven steps to start a tea business. If you want to get into selling teas and herbal teas and such, I'm going to give you seven solid tips to help you get started, and we're going to do it right now. All right, so this is Marketing Food Online, and this is Damien, and I'm hoping you're having a great day. I am actually going to give you seven easy-to-follow steps to get a tea business up and running. Now, when I say easy, creating any business of any kind is not easy, but following these steps, uh, how I lay them out, will definitely help and make your steps a lot smoother when you want to get up and running. Now, I'm going to go from number seven down to number one. And these seven steps are going to give you a broad understanding of literally from the get-go, how you start it, how you source, how you price, and even a couple of ideas on where you can sell it, how to pack it, and so on. So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump right into it. And I'm going to give you number seven. Number seven is where are you getting started? Now, if you are starting a home-based food business, you would fall under the cottage food laws. Those are laws that are set up to allow home-based food businesses to literally create food products from home and sell them. Those are great ways to start food businesses, but the only drawback is the fact that you are doing it from home limits where you can sell it to. Okay, so if you're creating one from home, you want to check with your state, county, and city because every state's laws are slightly different. And when it trickles down to muni municipalities, which are your local uh, bodies of government, you want to check with the city and county to see, make sure that you have all the licensing and permits and everything you would need for the cottage food business. Now, is teas allowed under cottage food laws? Yes and no. What I mean by that is many states, I've actually uh, learned quite a few <laughs> Over the past uh, quite a few years, I've learned quite a bit about the cottage food business. Many states do allow the, the creation and the mixing and such of, the, of teas uh, from home. But there are some states that actually don't. Um, so you want to definitely check with your state specifically because it will be state-specific information about what you can make and what you can't make. So number two, you got to incorporate. You want to get incorporated as a business. Do not do this as a hobby on the side when you're dealing with any type of food product. I highly recommend, this is just my, my, my two cents and my recommendation, incorporate yourself and separate yourself from your personal and business life, okay? Reason being is the liability factor. If someone were to get sick or has some issue with a tea and have a reaction, there could be litigation and legal issues that pop up and you don't want to deal with that if you're not incorporated as a business. So incorporate yourself and get yourself food business insurance. Yes, even if you're making teas or sorting teas and mixing them and putting them in bags, Get yourself food business insurance, liability insurance for your food business. Because again, that's going to separate your personal from your business life and limit the amount of potential litigation issues and financial responsibilities that could come up if it happens to happen. So you always want to protect yourself. Number three, permits, licenses. So here is the breakdown. As I started out, I said, if you're working from home, you need to check with the permits and the types of licenses and even possibly even a food handler's card or a course that you may have to take. Every state is different, so find out specifically about permits and licenses. Now, if you don't want to do this from home and you have the money to open up some type of retail location or a commercial address or commercial kitchen, then that's going to be a totally separate types of business licenses, uh, types of permits, and, and those types of things that come along with uh, opening a food business. When you're in a commercial setting, it's a totally different environment. So do keep that in mind as well. Number four, where are you going to source your teas from? You need to do some research and find out where you can get it in bulk. You want to buy it in wholesale. You want to buy it in large quantities. Now, tea businesses can become extremely profitable food business ideas. And here is why. Tea as a whole, when you buy it in bulk, as a product of, of, of agriculture, it is very, very inexpensive when you can get it at bulk and break it down into very small bags. That's why tea and coffee in general, actually both of them are very extremely profitable businesses because of the ability to get it in such a large quantity. But it's only used in an individual cup of tea. Very minuscule amount of tea leaves are only put into a bag at once. So even if you're using whole leaf teas, it's very small amount. So if you have the ability to locate a great and track down a good source, a uh, good supplier, 
um, definitely do it where you can do it in bulk. I'm talking about 50, 60 pounds of tea leaves, which would create literally thousands upon thousands of servings. But tea and coffee in general, believe it or not, they're both very cheap when it comes to the idea of getting them in bulk and breaking them down into single serves. So later in the in the uh, the podcast or later in the video, I'm going to sh- talk to you really quick also about how you can actually get somebody to do the work for you. And I'll get into that shortly. So actually, number five, coming right up. Here it is. Um, this is going to be, are you going to pack it yourself? Are you going to actually create the teas? Or are you going to get a co-packer? Yes, you can actually get a co-packer to pack and produce the product, the final product for you. I'm actually going to put down in the description, I put together Marketing Food Online team has a great co-packer list for teas and beverages. I've actually put together a great digital download. You can click on that link, go to our site and and order order your own copy. Um, It also has the 20 questions that I add to all of our lists, 20 co-packer questions to help you get started with your conversation with your potential co-packer. So definitely get yourself a copy of that. It's a huge list of different companies that can do teas and coffees and such. So if you pack it yourself, Keep in mind the pricing that you're going to have depending upon the amount of time it's going to take you to actually create the product. So you can hand pack tea. Of course you could. You can also repackage it and put it in. uh, If you're doing loose leaf teas, you can put them in larger bags as opposed to individual sausage. Um, So you want to definitely check that out. So packing it yourself or having a co-packer do it, those are the ways that you can get it produced. And that moves us on to the, the final two. So number six, how are you going to distribute it? How are you actually going to distribute this product once it's complete? Think about it. Give it some give it some ideas. Give it some time to set in because you can sell it online. You can open a retail store. You can do wholesale or you can do all three if you want. Um, if you do the wholesale route, you want to make sure that you're getting it at a great margin from your supplier. And that gives you an opportunity to make a profit as you resell it in bulk to somebody else. Selling it online can be very, very extremely profitable because there are some avenues such as the Ebays and Etsy's and even Amazons of the world that you can get your product up and running and in front of the millions and millions of customers. And there's, it's a very lightweight product to ship. So the margin for the shipping is also is very inexpensive. So it, once you've got your packaging done and you've figured out how you're going to pack the product, once you get a supplier, then distributing it is something you need to give a little bit of time to dedicate to to figure out what would be the best route for you. And number seven, pricing. So how do you price it, Damien? I mean, the, all of these all these tips are great and well, I've got a final product, but how do I price it? Now, the one thing I tell a lot of my clients who I do my consultations with is when you first start a food business, it is the most expensive part of your business. Here's why. When you get up and running, you don't have cash flow, number one, because you're literally starting something from nothing. Once you get up running and you're buying these these bags or you're buying the package and you're buying the tea leaves, everything that you need to get going, your licensing, your permits, you're putting out a lot of money up front with nothing coming in initially. And you're buying product at a smaller chunk, believe it or not, than some of these larger producers of teas and tea bags and specialty teas. As your business grows and you have the capacity, you've got the cash flow to then buy product in a much bigger bulk, which gives you a better discount. So when you always start a product, when you always start a food business, the product is always going to be the most expensive. Okay. Traditionally, I mean, there's a lot of people who say, well, there's like, if you can get two and a half to 2.5 times, you want to mark it up. That's a good ratio, I guess, if you want to start that way, but you need to factor in a lot of things. If you're selling online, there's a lot of fees involved with selling online. There's a lot of fees involved with maintaining websites. So there's a lot of variables. And as you go all the way back to number one, where are you going to start? If you're going to do it from home, then the overhead is very minuscule, very small amount. Now, if you're going to do it from a co-packer, then your costs do go down, but you're going to have to pay a co-packer. Okay. So figuring out the price points is going to be dependent upon, are you doing it? And how much are you going to buy and who else is going to be doing it for you? So those are seven quick tips to give you a real basic outline of how to create an extremely profitable tea business and then figure out where you want to sell that and get it up and running. So if that helps you out, do give me a big thumbs up. If you've got questions, let me know down below. We'll see you on the next video. So if you're looking to start your own food business, check out these videos for more resources. Profitable food business ideas, how to start a food truck business, learn all about cottage food laws to create a home business for selling food, and how to start a catering business from home. These and many more small food business ideas are all at your fingertips when you subscribe to Marketing Food Online.